Sound design. So why do you polarity invert the rear sub in a cardioid subwoofer array? This is the question that Scott asked me in the workshop last week. I felt like I didn't really have enough time to answer his question well, so I wanted to make another video about it. So the short story is two reasons. Number one, we do it because Harry Olson told us to do it, and that's how this array is designed. Um, and number two, it's so that we can get these effects that we want of summation in the front and cancellation in the rear. So let's look at each of these a little bit closer. So first of all, this guy, Harry Olson, wrote this paper, Gradient Loudspeakers, in which he says, if you want to make a first order gradient sound radiator unidirectional, then you need two zero order gradient sound radiators separated by a small distance operating with 180 degrees difference in phase, but with a delay to one of the radiators. Um, some of these terms were new to me, and I found that it was helpful to take a look at this paper, Low Frequency Directivity Control by Olivier Lebot. I'm not sure how you say that name. Sorry about that, Olivier. And he just got a couple of nice uh, introductory remarks here. In 1973, Harry F. Olson introduced the term of gradient loudspeaker as a reciprocal of the gradient microphone. So that's where the term comes from. And the term gradient loudspeaker designates a loudspeaker consisting of two or more loudspeakers separated in space and operating with difference in phase. So a little bit of a repetition of what we already heard. So that's the first answer to your question because that's how the array is designed. But let's look at the theory behind this. Why does this work? Let's zoom in on my array here. So I have two matching subwoofers here. This is the front one, this is the rear one. They're both, they're both facing the same direction, so this way, right? And let's look at the story of 86 hertz. Why 86 hertz? Well, it fits nicely into meters, so if we divide the speed of sound uh, in meters by 86, we get the number Four. So that's cool because I can see here that this is one, uh, sorry, this is half a meter. Here's one meter, two meters, four meters. So let's create some visual aids here to help us out at one meter, sorry, zero meters, one meter, two meters, and four meters. And this will divide nicely also into the phase wheel. So if we think of 360 degrees of phase, then at zero meters, we're at zero degrees. At one meter, we're at 90 degrees. At two meters, we're at 180 degrees. And at four meters, we're at 360 degrees. And now I can try to draw out that waveform since I have these milestones here. So I'll start at this front sub at the grill. Let's pretend that sound leaves here and uh, it's gonna go up in amplitude, it's gonna hit 90 degrees and then come down 180, then we'll get to 270 and then 360. Okay, so this is the story of 86 Hertz, one period, one cycle, four meters. Now let's look at the story of the rear sub. So we say, okay, we know that there's a spacing distance here, so this guy should go up like this, right? 90, 180, 270, 360, back up here to 90. Okay, they're not in sync. But then I remember, oh right, the rear one has a polarity inversion. So let's draw this again upside down. 90, 180, 270, 360, back to 90. They're still not in sync, but I also remember that there's a delay. How much delay? Well, the rear sub is delayed by the spacing distance. The spacing distance is one meter. So I can grab this guy, delay it by one meter, and look at that, now they're in sync. So now I can finish this drawing and see that the end here, yes, they are in fact in sync, and the result is going to be summation, right? Pretty cool. So that's the story in the front. Now let's look at the story with the sound traveling to the rear. So I'm going to delete everything here and I'm not going to draw my milestones again. We'll just try to use them from memory. So starting with the front sub here again, 90, 180, 270, 
360. And what's happening with the rear sub? Well, we know polarity inversion, right? 90, 180, 270. But there's a delay. How much? One meter. Now I can finish drawing this. And we see that they are out of phase. So the result is going to be flat line back here. So that's the story of 86 hertz in the front and the rear. And if we zoom out here and look at a prediction of 80 hertz, this is why we get this nice cardioid shape in the front, cancellation in the rear. And if we want to look at our front to back ratio with our microphone in the front and the rear, we can see that we have a nice, healthy uh, 20 dB front to back ratio. So that's why you polarity invert the rear sub. So let me know what questions this brings up for you, and I'll be happy to try and do some more videos about it. All right, thanks. Sound design. Yeah.